I expect by now most of you will know that I enjoy traveling by train rather than riding around in a car. However, there are trains, and then there are trains. Okay, so I'll still stop and look at most of them, but still, some trains are, well, just more interesting than the rest. My name is Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. My favourite trains are not necessarily the best. I'm really fond of London's underground trains. And while I like them, I'd have a very hard time defending them as the best. The London underground system is well over 150 years old and so has some anomalies that date back all that way. They're fascinating. <laughs> but they're also uncomfortable, noisy, hot, and way too small for some people to comfortably stand up straight inside them. A tube trains always seem to be hurtling along at breakneck speed, but in reality, the perception of speed is more due to how close everything is to the trains down there, and the less than level track, than actual earth-shattering speed records. So, why do I like them? I suppose I like the technology that was used to make them run that is often still in place and still being used over 150 years after the first trains started running. And while the trains do go to places people need to be, some of the stations are, are rather close together. Now, I've demonstrated a few times in London that it's faster to walk between certain stations than take the train. I'm thinking especially of Leicester Square and Covent Garden, for example. And yet, despite this, the route between the two stations is one of the capital's busiest. People are funny, aren't they? <laughs> of course, to ride a train, you have to go to a station to start your journey. And here, too, there are huge differences. London is unusual in that it has several large terminus stations and not just one big central station. And despite all having more or less the same functionality, some are stunning with truly spectacular architecture that is both functional and, well, just right. These stations, and I'm especially thinking of King's Cross and St Pancras, are lovely. Euston Station, on the other hand, is horrible. <laughs> other than providing a way of getting on and off a train, and it doesn't even do that basic function well, the station has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Sadly, it's a station I've had the misfortune of using often. I found that the journey can be as much fun as the destination. Clean, comfortable trains to ride from lovely stations with facilities that work all add to the experience. Yes, the destination may be the same, but really, which of the two stations would you want to spend time waiting for your train at? I must say, King's Cross really has a lot going for it. Quite apart from the very famous Sir Nigel Gresley having been based there, his office was right in the station, a short distance further down the concourse, platform nine and three quarters seems to get a remarkable number of passenger visits. What fun!
a true destination station. Houston? Hmm. You might go there to catch a cold. Can you tell I don't like it? Now, have you ever met people who just seem to love to have found something to complain about? Instead of enjoying life's journey, they find things to complain about and then want to let everyone else know how hard their lot in life is. While I don't really like the utilitarian, poorly thought out Euston, since I have to use the station, I've had a look around and found a great little place that serves a lovely breakfast, just a couple of minutes walk along the road. Lovely. Finding the fun in life situations that aren't so great is like that lovely breakfast spot in an otherwise less than appealing place. Life's journey is, to a large extent, what we make of it. It's not so much about the good times and the bad, the for better or worse as we say. It's more about how we handle situations, how we react, how we allow the good or bad in us to show. In preparation for life's journey, just as with any journey in any vehicle, we have to make sure we have the fuel, the resources, the motivation to get through each situation along the way. Paul had this idea noted when he said, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. I suppose when we ask so often what we should do and are always looking for guidance in our lives, we could reflect on Paul's comment there. Make the most of every opportunity. But wouldn't that be good advice in any case? Why did Paul add, in these evil days? Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm sure clever Bible scholars could tell me what particular horrible things were going on at the time. But how about looking at it this way? No matter what is going on, however bad it is, make the most of it. Make the most of every opportunity, however bad it is. So what would that look like? Perhaps instead of complaining about how bad things are or sitting around waiting for a job to land in our lap, what about getting out there and encouraging others? What about helping in the local community, volunteering? You never know what might come of it. If you become the sort of person people like to be around, they may invite you to work with them. Paul didn't say, sit around waiting for God to tell you what to do. No, he said, understand what the Lord wants you to do. Understand. Do what you know I would do if I were there with you. Saying we're followers of Jesus is sometimes the easy part. Showing by our actions that we really do can be quite something else. Those old underground trains may not have it all together and may be coming towards the end of their useful lives. But still, I want to be around them. They have a charm that reflects the clever people who invented and made them. Until next time, goodbye.